Unless you're in the military, that blood type patch you have on your plate carrier is completely pointless. So in this week's video, let's talk about what medical information you should have on you with your kit. This video is not for military personnel. I'm not gonna speak on what they should and should not do in the theater of war simply because that is not my realm and they operate completely differently than the civilian world. What I'm talking about today is law enforcement officers, TEMS medics, and people that just like being prepared, having kit and going out to the range and shooting. So I see a lot of people walking around with a blood type patch. First and foremost, this is totally useless in the civilian world simply because in any trauma center in the United States that I know of, nobody is going to take your word for a patch you have on your vest. You could just as easily get that wrong and now they're in trouble when they're transfusing you with A positive and you happen to be a different blood type. So in an emergency situation, if you are shot, you need a blood transfusion, they are exclusively going to give you on cross match blood. They're going to give you either O positive or O negative blood. Now, contrary to common belief, this is a little bit of a tangent, O positive blood is a universal donor. However, if O positive blood is given to a woman of childbearing age, when they do have a child in the future, they are going to need to receive a medication to stop some complications. Other than that, O positive is fine to give to just about everybody. So you go into the trauma center, you need blood, they're going to give you uncrossed matched blood, and then eventually they're going to run a type and screen, and they are going to get you your very specific blood for you. And that is regardless of what patch you have. They're going to rip that off. Nobody cares what it is in the civilian world. The only exception to this might be a specialized team in the United States for a law enforcement agency or a three-letter agency of some kind that has a standing agreement with a trauma center that has records on file for each of their members, but I do not think this is a very common thing at all. And if you're part of one of those teams, you know it. If you're unsure, I guarantee you have no such agreement. So with that being said, what medical information should we have on our persons and where should we keep it? This is very individualized. So different teams are going to have different stuff that they want, but I'm gonna tell you kind of what my experience is and what I've had team members carry on them, what records I've kept, and what you can keep on your plate carrier regardless of the role you're filling. The only medical information I would consider having on the outside of my vest would be something along the lines of uh, no known drug allergies. You can obviously abbreviate that to NKDA. Um, every paramedic that's responding to you is gonna know exactly what that means and they're gonna take you at your word that you're not allergic to any medications. And then anything you wear a medical alert bracelet or uh, a necklace for. If you have a medical notification like that, you could consider putting that on the outside of your vest. Obviously that's a little less common and I'm not saying you absolutely have to do it, but it is an option to you and would be a useful piece of information to have. If you really wanna advertise you're a type one diabetic, by all means do so. Honestly, if it was me, I probably wouldn't do that. But like I just said, it is an option. Well, that's the only information I would recommend having displayed on your plate carrier. You should have more medical information in a different location. So my personal recommendation is to get a note card or a piece of paper with all of your medical info written on it. We'll go over what that entails in a second. Essentially what you can do is you can laminate that piece of paper, fold it or tuck it up with your plate. You can put it in an admin pocket, in a pocket of your pants or whatever kit you are wearing. Obviously this piece of paper is only beneficial if people know where to look for it. So you either have to inform your team that this is something you've placed on yourself and where it is, or you need to have some kind of marking on you to designate where that info is and where somebody can get it. When I was on the SWAT team in Iowa, we basically had every operator fill out an entire medical card and then they'd all keep that on their plate carrier and we had a laminated binder that would go uh, in the uh, locked armored vehicle when it wasn't in use. So we'd have two copies of it. Obviously, we'd be very careful with that information because it was you know, very personal to a lot of them. Um, but we'd have that binder and then if the operator got hurt and I wasn't there, everybody knew where that card was. If I was there, I could get the stuff out of the MRAP and just really quickly read off the medical history to the receiving hospital so they didn't have to uh, guess on their treatments or anything like that. But blood type was never listed on the sheets. So with that, I would recommend with that card having a couple bits of information and some of it is really obvious, some less so. 
First and foremost, I'd put name and date of birth. This is enough to look up your medical history pretty much in, in any healthcare system in the United States if you have both of those things. Next, I would have the healthcare facility that they usually get uh, care from. So an example in Colorado, if somebody gets care at Denver Health, but they're being transported to UC Health facility because it's the you know, closest appropriate uh, area, then UC Health knows that they can go and request information from Denver Health. They can get that all sent over and they can get the charts combined so they're not missing something along the uh, treatment pathway for that patient. So that's a little tidbit. Not many people put it, but I think it is useful personally. If you don't have that on your card or they don't know it, it's going to be okay. They're going to figure it out, but it makes things just a little bit easier. Next up, I'd have two emergency contacts. These emergency contacts shouldn't just be you know, a friend that knows your name and knows kind of where you live. This should be somebody that is familiar with your medical history and can guide treatments going forward. Tell them, hey, he's got an allergy to this or um, he's had trouble with this uh, in the past. Somebody that is knowledgeable about you. Next up, I would have your major medical history listed out. Anything that you're diagnosed with, even if it seems minor, is going to help guide treatment. You know, even something as simple as a knee replacement could interfere with some kinds of orthopedic surgery and is something good to know. Next up, I'd have basically everything in your sample. So you're gonna have any of your allergies that you have to medications. This isn't like your cat allergies, you know, something like that. This is going to be, you know, I'm allergic to penicillin, I'm allergic to uh, sulfa drugs, something like that. And then I like to add a couple things at the end. I like to have religious affiliation for the person just because if it is a life or death situation, you have family uh, there or you want something uh, read to you, you want a chaplain with you, it's good to know uh, what religion you affiliate with so that they can get you the right spiritual care in the hospital, which seems minor to some people, but it's a huge deal to other people. So I just like to have that there as a comfort measure. And then finally, if they're not one of your emergency contacts, have your next of kin listed and what their address is. Essentially, this will help, uh, as morbid as it sounds, with a death notification. Uh, possibly it's going to help them get in contact with somebody to make uh, care decisions for you if you're you know, on life support, so if you're being ventilated and basically supported by machines, they can decide if that's the route you want to go or if you want to go into more comfort care. These are usually the only people, unless otherwise designated, that can make those decisions for you. So I really like to have that kind of at the end of the paper. Once again, I know it sounds morbid, but it's one of those things that you don't think about until you absolutely need it. You can add other stuff too, but honestly, a lot of that's going to be sorted out by your next of kin. Um, by your emergency contacts, you know, you can list, uh, you know, your where your will documents are and stuff like that. But I think that's a little bit too much information to have on uh, just a quick p bit of information. So really quick, just heading off some of the comments I know I'm going to get. Obviously, don't put a bunch of personal information on your plate carrier if there is an OPSEC concern. Uh, to be completely honest, though, in the United States, for law enforcement, uh, prepared individuals, or uh, Thames medics, OPSEC really isn't going to be a thing if you're injured. You know, we're not really worried about being captured by an enemy and having that information used against us, all right? So if you're in that environment, obviously don't put stuff you don't want the enemy knowing on your play carrier. Next up, uh, people are going to have opinions about where this is stored. I don't care where it's stored. If you store it in front of the plate, obviously it could get hit with whatever bullet injured you. You could put it behind the plate. Just as long as people know where it is, that is really all that matters in this situation. So what works for you works for you. Who am I to tell you different? And next, people are going to argue about whether you have too much or too little on that piece of paper. I believe this is kind of the, the solid information that's going to guide your treatment going forward. But obviously, there is room for interpretation and everybody's going to be a little bit different for what they foresee their needs being in the future. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is my, hey, better than nothing crew. They're like, well, I'm going to wear the blood patch just in case uh, it helps them determine it in the future. Here's the deal. And, I, and this is purely anecdotal. This is not based on any studies, but I have to imagine there are a lot of very wrong blood patches out there where people are guessing at their blood type or they did the little card, which do have an error rate. And uh, they're basically putting the wrong blood type on them. If somebody happens to heed that and they look at it and they tell the hospital, hey, they're this blood type, 
Let's say they give you the blood, one that's dangerous because it might not be your correct type and you, you could very well be wrong about that. Number two, they're probably gonna uh, type and screen you anyways and then it's gonna come back something different than that blood patch and it's just going to add confusion to the whole situation. So I would highly recommend that you just leave those blood patches off completely. Every trauma center has a supply of blood in the United States that's uncross-matched. It's, it's the universal donor, so positive or negative and that's going to do just fine for you in the meantime until they can cross match blood for your specific type. So with all of that being said, I'm excited to see what you guys think in the comments and I will see you next week.